Dark Knight back here with another video, and this time I'm going to be talking about the Monarch Talent Tree and just kind of make a little video about um, which to choose, or at least my suggestion, of course. As is everything, it's all opinion, and of course there's going to be people that will disagree, but I can at least show you how to um, set it properly. Now, the first thing you want to know about Monarch Tree is how to get there for the talents. So you click on your Monarch at the top left, and then you come down here next to Detail at the bottom of the screen. It says Talent. You click on that, and you're going to see you can have two presets, and you can click on there, on number two, or on number one. To change it, you hit Confirm, but then it locks it in, and you have to wait. There's a cool down before you can switch it back. Um, you can switch it back, um, though, after the cooldown. Now, um, when at the top of the screen, you'll see it says reset for 2,000 gems. So if you don't like the way it's set up, or if you made a mistake, or maybe you did it early on in your account, and now you need different stuff, or you didn't know what you were doing, and now you need to do it again, have no fear. You can reset it and redo it as many times as you need. Keep in mind, it will cost you 2,000 gems, though. But um, what I noticed is that as the game progresses, you're going to need different things. Um, and so not necessarily it's the best decision to uh, stay with the same talent. So you're going to want to reset it uh, more than once throughout your Ebony plane if you play a long time. But let me just show you what you do. So um, if you... When you when you reset it, it will let you choose which one you want and you click on it and then you would hit the max button I've already done it and I don't want to reset it, but um, You would click on it and um, you hit, either hit learn and in this case you would hit it four times or You hit the max button and it will learn it all the way through and then you it will go to the next one now you'll notice when you click on the first one um, if you click the middle one, it will give you an option to choose all three right here. But if you click the one on the left, it will only allow you to, um, choose the one on the left and the one in the middle on the next row. If you choose the one on the right, it will only allow you to choose the one in the middle or on the right. So not only you want to pay attention to which one you're choosing, but also the next row, because you may miss out on something important. If, let's say, um, you want something that's over here, but then you pick this one over here, you're only going to have the option to pick these two. So it's best to try to stay in the middle so you'll have all three options on the next row. Unless the one on the left or on the right is so good, you don't want to pass it up, and it's okay if you pass up the one on the opposite side. So I'll just tell you what I picked. So I picked the offering. What this does is it increases the prestige and XP of your monarch uh, to 20%. Uh, I used to have it on March speed and I realized, hey, look, that's a bad idea. So I just changed it over to offering because honestly, um, I feel that the prestige and the monarch XP is way more important than your March speed. And then this free construction buildup... Um, it's only uh, um, increasing your free construction time by a few seconds, so it's really not worth it, I don't think. I would go with the offering for sure on this one. And that will open up all three. Now, the second line, these two right here are the most debatable because this one, it gives you a protection um, capacity when you attack monsters so you don't have too many wounded. Um and uh, if you research it all the way to four, it will um, the percentage will be 5%. In other words, you would never get more than 5% of your troops wounded when attacking a monster. But to me, um, as progressing in the game, I'm thinking, you know, you're supposed to really be trying to hit these monsters with no wounded anyway. So it, it really doesn't overall do as much. With the builder duration, makes the purchase building slot last longer. I don't even use that. So um, I would. I don't even use the builder at all. I just do my buildings one at a time. So it, uh, 
I, I went with this one because this is going to increase your resource production by 50%. Yes, it slows your gathering speed, um, but you can make up for your gathering speed in other ways. I, I really like the 50% increase on resource production because we all know how much RSS we need. Now, this next one, um, of course, choosing the middle one, it will open up all three. Uh, research speed, it's good, but when I tried it, it only gave me 4%. I didn't think that was a very big increase. Of course, for big upgrades it is, but I, I don't really have a problem running out of speed ups. I really have more of a problem running out of gold, so I, don't, I, I personally didn't need that one. Um, the archer attack... Um, that's probably a good one, too, for defense, but I ended up going with the um, the warehouse protection capacity. Um, you know, I, I may change it to the archer tower attack now that I'm looking at it. This prob might be the better option. But that's what I have right now. Um, and then if you go to uh, the healing cost, I would totally choose healing cost over troop load or death turning wounded uh, rate of troops attacking from the main city. Um, that's a good one, but I mean, that's pretty good. But the healing cost, reducing the cost of healing troops by 20%, I mean, that is valuable. Um, and then over time, that will make a huge difference. Um, and then uh, that allows you to... Plus, if you choose the rescue one, then it's only going to allow you to pick one of these two, and you're not going to be able to pick the stamina regeneration, and you really want this one. It increases your stamina regeneration by 25%. That will allow you to join more rallies. And if you're in a big alliance that does a lot of rallies, you probably know, especially if you're a non-spender, how much money you have to spend just to keep enough stamina in store to join all those rallies. So this is important. Resource plunder allows you to plunder a portion of resources from enemy's resource spot. We're not even allowed to attack resource spots on my server, so I could care less about that one. And subordinate city training speed. I have training speed buffs through my subordinate city generals and skill books. I don't uh, that's the most important. And so if you choose the rescue one, it sounds good because, oh, well, I'm going to get wounded troops instead of dead troops when I attack other players. Yeah, but then you miss out on this one. It's only going to give you these two options. And on top of that, you're missing out on the healing cost. So I would go this way. I would go left, left. And then um, for this one, I really like the one in the middle. It will allow you to get twice as many resources when you open certain boxes sometimes. So like when you open ore, let's say you open 100 million ore, and you'll notice that the amount that was actually opened was, let's say, 110 million. If you have this opened, um, you will, you will you, I mean, every time I open, if you have this on, every time you open boxes, you'll notice that you'll get more resources than were actually in the amount of boxes you opened. So it's literally giving you free resources. General revival, I get enough revival stones, I don't need that. Um, I guess the subordinate city troop attack is okay, but it's not really increasing it by much. I would definitely go with the one in the middle. Um, trap triggering, by now you should know you shouldn't even be making traps in the first place. It's probably a whole nother video, so I'm not going to go into that. Um, and then... Uh, training speed, I wouldn't worry about that because I get so many, I mean, even as many troops as I have over a billion power, and I'm not even close to running out of training speed ups. I mean, you get those every time an alliance member kills a boss. So I would totally go with the gathering boost, gives you 20% increase from gathering resources. And that's okay because even though you don't, you'll have to choose between these two right here, I mean, I guess you could increase your hospital capacity. There's other ways to do that. What you really want to do is you want to protect food from being consumed by troops. This will increase the amount of food protected from being consumed by troop upkeep by 100%. I would totally go with this one. Um, this one, all it does is kills your enemy troops. Um, I don't really care for that. Um, I would go with this one right here in the middle. 
Um, and then the last one, uh, training capacity, not so important. Um, subordinate city troops, death to survival. I actually used to have it on this one because I, I wanted to increase that way. I don't have to, if my troops get zeroed out in my sub, I don't have to wait a long time for them to retrain. So at least you get some that survive. But honestly, the bigger your defense gets later in the game, um, now I'm seeing this as more valuable. If you're early on the game, I would choose this one. Because reason being is if you're a small player, you're probably going to be ghosting your troops, or you, at least you should be. You're not strong enough to win defense against big players anyway. So there's no reason to pick in-city HP because you're, you're hopefully not even going to need to use that. Um, you're going to need your subs, though, to have as many troops as possible to help you win battles. So that's why I picked this one early on. But as you get bigger and bigger and bigger and start relying on an actual defense when you can't ghost your troops anymore, once you have a defense big enough that you cannot ghost your troops, you're going to want to switch it to the in-city troop HP. So again, a lot of this stuff, and probably eventually the hospital capacity may become more important than this other stuff. So, But I really saw the gathering boost is way more valuable than training speed and trap triggering speed uh, chances. So it's really a pros and cons. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. You're going to have to give up something. So it's like, what's more valuable? Um... But you can reset it as many times as you want. You can even make a, you can come down here and click two, like I mentioned earlier, and make make a second one. Um, this one's probably all messed up because I haven't really done anything with this second one in a while. Um, so basically, uh, I leave it on one. Remember, when you switch back and forth, there is a cooldown time and now I'm forgetting how long it was and I don't want to do it and mess myself up so uh that's the talent tree um please like and subscribe and let me know what you think and if there's any other video suggestions you have please let me know